and welcome to Unguri Wasu uh, Television. And this is the program where we talk about legislation in Gahnawage, how we go about doing it, the new way of doing things, as we say, uh, through the community decision-making process. Joining us on the program in a few moments will be Trina C. Daibo, who is a technician with the Office of the Council of Chiefs over at the Mohawk Council of Gahnawage. She's been very busy of late, aside from her other work. She's been working on electoral reform here, and that's what we'll talk about on this show, along with a couple of other things. Uh, first of all, if you didn't get it, the new Unguri Wasua is now out to the community. You should have it in the mailboxes. And for those uh, who share mailbox and uh, maybe didn't get your own copy, you can stop at the Mohawk Council of Kahnawaga main offices and get one there also at the uh, Social Development Unit and a few other places in Gahnawage. You should see these around Gahnawage. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But uh, without any further ado, let's bring Trina onto the program. Welcome along. Hello. Hi, Joe. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Well, I, I applaud your uh, dedication uh, as we uh, close in on the, the holidays here. Uh, we have a very tight window to get this shot, and my hat's off to Trina for... Uh, struggling through her sore throat, but uh, making it here. Well, welcome along to the program. Thank you. You've um, uh, been very busy of late. Uh, one of the things that's coming up in uh, 2012, elections in Gahnawage. And for the past several years, actually since the turn of the century, and that really sounds mm -hmm. <laughs> like a long time, but it's actually just a few years. But since the turn of the century now, every election that's happened has had some sort of problem. And people keep saying, we need to fix the elect, uh, election law and some of the regulations. And uh, so now through the community decision-making process, one of those uh, laws coming up for review and revision is electoral reform. So how did that actually get started out? <clears throat> well, um, when the community decision-making process uh, began, uh, Lori Jacobs, past electoral officer, submitted a request to amend the law. And with that, all the, all the amendments that have been submitted over the years by past electoral officers was also submitted. So here we are. We're at in, in information dissemination phase. So that's what we've been doing, is just providing the community with a copy of the law the recommendations that are being made, and just informing people what's happening and to be prepared when the ILCC or the KLCC, whatever we're, name, we're calling it right now, um, when they're ready to call the first hearing. Yep, so the dissemination of information is just that. Here's the law. Here's, uh, here's some of the issues that have come up. Uh, we talked about past electoral officers. Now, Lori Jacobs put it out there and said, yeah. I think it <clears throat> needs to be reformed, but since every election, every time there is an election in Gahnawaga, the electoral officer always provides a, uh, a written report afterward and saying this is what happened, this is how it worked out, and usually has some recommendations. And every single election in the yeah. past uh, seven or eight, there have been recommendations for some change. It took a while. I think uh, in terms of chief and council, it was always kind of, um, I think they found themselves in a strange position saying, well, yeah. how do we make changes recommended uh how do we make recommended changes when it'll affect what we're doing and if we do it too close to election will it be seen as yeah. being too advantageous to us so in a way this is one of the, the the best examples of a law that actually needs to go to the community through the community decision decision making process so that the people can actually say i think this needs change that yeah. the other thing so uh first of all so you're one of uh, several people on the um on the file, maybe yeah. just tell us a little about who else is on it. Okay, so what happens is because Lloyd Jacobs is, you know, a community member, she doesn't um, have the resources to get the communication out, get access to everything. So the Office of the Council Chiefs becomes the sponsoring unit. And with that, uh, myself and Jeffrey Dybul were assigned. And um, we have a, a working group consisting of three past electoral officers. So that is Lori Jacobs, Darlene Elford, and Angus L. Mentor. Um, so they also were the ones who in the past gave recommendations um, on what they thought should be changed. So it's been good because they're out there, they're able to explain to community members why they made those recommendations because we're not a, we weren't holding the election, so we're not positive, we know what they are, but we don't know why. Um, so 
<clears throat> in the recommendations that we did hand out to the community, uh, it had the year of the recommendation, but it didn't say who put it in. So, you know, we're not targeting anybody for the certain recommendation, although they can explain it if, if they feel they can in, when it comes to the CDMP process. The, the main question that would be asked, I guess, uh, from community members are, what were the big problems? What were the biggest ones that seemed to jump out? Well, over the last few elections, we've had some membership uh, issues. Uh, we've had people in the past who, we had one community member who was a chief on council and then when he tried to get uh, reelected, was denied. So that went through a little process and went through the court and got overturned and he wasn't able to run. We had the, uh, the famous Cunyat de Rio incident, ordinarily resident. So all these issues are, are part of the recommendations to be looked at. Yeah, and, and I remember, of course, working at MCK through all of these, the, uh, the various positions. And, and when it comes to it, people have, <laughs> they're, they're very adamant that they're right. And it's hard to say, well, there's a black and white answer. You know, Cunyat de Rio was a, a typical example of mm -hmm. one where, yeah, but are we going to, he, he isn't, all right, he's not living here currently, but he's from Ghanawage. But he's also away getting an education. And he's getting an education. And should, so bringing should it he, back to our community. So should he be penalized for living away? What, but the law is written the way it is. And, and yeah. that's how the courts will deem the law in effect, is yeah. because that's what it says. So if you want it to change, there's only one way to, to do it, is to get into the law, change yeah. the law, or change the regulation. So I guess that's uh, kind yeah. of where we're at. Exactly. So when it does go to the first hearing, the community will be asked the first question would, you know, because the community will be giving the mandate to whoever the technical team will be to make those changes. So, you know, we've, we have a lot of recommendations out are coming from the community about criteria to be a chief, not only using a membership, what about criteria? So, you know, later on, I could go through some of those recommendations that we've been getting over the last three months during this phase. What are some of the things you've been doing uh, in the information dissemination phase. It was announced back, uh, what about September or so, that there's going yeah. to be some movement now on this file and uh, now we're gonna be putting out information. So what are some of the things that are you, you've been doing? So we, we started uh, getting into the community in October. We held some kiosks at the service complex. Uh, we also carried out a little survey. Only took about two minutes to answer. We, we've been on K103. Uh, we were on last Friday for the third time. You were at the, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things, you went to the Golden Age Club, but nobody got yeah, there. Yeah, nobody came, <laughs> no. So we had a lot of cake and dessert. Uh, yeah, that was very good, yeah, too, I yeah, have to say. Thank yeah. you very much uh, so, for, for holding that event. <laughs> we, you know, we did our best to try to reach yeah. the community. And, I mean, what we did find is people are busy. People want to get involved, but... At this point, it's just about giving information out. Um, the survey takes a couple of minutes, and I know a lot of people, as soon as they see surveys, as much as people say, mm -hmm. I want to have my opinion, I need to tell people uh, what I think, but then when they see a survey, they say, I'll do it later, I'll do it. But this takes about two minutes. Are you going to be doing any more of these before uh, the next steps get uh, take place, or you kind of um, put a stop to no, that? No, I, I mean, officially, if somebody called today, my report's not complete yet, so I would probably do the survey with... If you're watching... Take the survey, it takes two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Um, but we're trying to, what we're doing is we're, we're gonna submit a report now of the information phase. We're gonna give that to the, uh, to the ILC. They're gonna use that report when they call the first hearing. So our information that we gathered is important for them to, to use when the first hearing, and we don't know when that hearing will be. It's gonna be up to the ILC when they yeah, the Legislative Coordinating Commission, yeah. of course, uh, helps move the laws along. And as uh, we've been saying now for the past several shows, we're on the verge of a lot of things. Uh, we'd hope to have some announcements by now, but uh, there, it's like you're standing at the edge of a cliff right now yeah. with, with some of the things going on, uh, with justice, for example. And, uh, That's and, the big one. And yeah. this one and membership mm -hmm. starting to you know, re-energize. But um, I guess some people would be hoping that these uh, laws or the laws and recommendations would change before the next election. But is that likely? 
Well, you know, I guess I was optimistic before. I'm a little less optimistic now only because um, not thinking about the time frame when electoral when we start looking for an electoral officer, which is going to be March. So that leaves a very small window of opportunity, even for the first hearing. So at this point, even if we're in the first hearing, whatever law is, the law is going to be in effect until it's changed by the community. So even if we're in the hearings and an election is called, we have to use the law that's in place now. Yeah, and I guess the good thing is, if you look back what's happened in the past several elections where they said, we know that there's a problem with uh, the election, the electoral law. We need to fix it. And then it gets kind of put aside for a little while because of all the priorities that are happening in Ganawage. All right, we'll get to the election. By the time it happens, it's coming up to election, so it's mm -hmm. too late. So, But in this case, it's a whole different process, like we say. So no matter what happens, yeah. it goes through, and it's not chief and council who are doing this. No, no, no chiefs on this, on well, this file. And no, no chiefs, uh, Gus idea is the uh, governance development, but we have no chief that's been following this to the T because we're trying to keep it arm's length because this, this one is definitely, as long as I've been working at the council office, um, the chiefs always had a hard time making changes to this law. There has been a few changes, the change of term. There has been, um, you know, minor grammar changes throughout the document, but... It has never been a big, you know, a move to make the changes that have been submitted over the years. So this is finally the chance that the community has to make those changes. So when you let, let's get to the survey a bit, and um, like I said, it takes a couple of minutes. Yeah. You've had a bunch of people stop by the kiosk, have a coffee, uh, you answer a few questions, then they mark off yeah. what they say. So what are some of the things that we we've gathered so far from this? Well, and the survey was was developed to gauge opinion. We're not actually using the survey results to sway or gear anybody. We're just to get some interest in people sitting down and get, you know getting people talking. So I'll just tell you some of the questions where, um, do you think that amend amendments should be made to the existing Mohawk Council of Election law? So it was a yes or no. And Is, well did it seem like there were a lot of yeah, yeses? Yes, there were more for yes. Um, this part of my report, which doesn't include uh, the last two kiosks, the last kiosk that was held. So out of that, um, there was 63 out of 73 that said yes. Um, this was an interesting one, but currently there is no limit on how many terms a council chief should hold office. Should there be a limit for terms that a chief could hold office? Circle yes, no, or undecided. And 47 out of 73 people said yes. I have some comments in the back uh, later on if we want to get to that. And then uh, the statement was, it takes a quorum of seven chiefs to make an official decision. There are currently 12 chiefs. How many chiefs should hold office? Circle one, keep it 12 or between nine and 11. And 49 people out of 73 said between nine and 12. Only 20 said keep it, uh, between 9 and 11, I'm sorry. Only 20 people said keep it 12 out of the 73. And there was like, some suggestions that were made later. Um, how old should a person be to be el eligible to be an elected chief? Overwhelmingly, 43 out of that said over 25. And there was some <clears throat> recommendations on specific age levels, maturity levels, stuff like that um, in the comments section. And then the question about membership. What should the membership criteria be to be an elected chief? Circle one, 50% blood quantum, which it currently is right now. Which, or, by the way, is, is in conflict a little sometimes with the, uh, well, the membership law and the electoral law don't always mesh perfectly. Yeah, it does not coincide with the membership law. Or be on the Mohawk registry. Um, actually, that one was pretty evenly. Uh, there was like, there's a lot of concern out there with changing the 50%. So I don't really want to go well, you're, you're either way. Yeah, the, I'm only, the, what yeah. they've come up with so far. Yeah. But um, what I would say a is on this area, a lot of the community members felt that a criteria should be made to be a chief. Um, I could just go through some of the comments that were made. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> so chiefs should have general knowledge of at least of our language and culture beliefs. To hold office, a chief should be part of a positive functioning family system. 
Chief should be 50 years old and be from Ganawage. 50? Yeah. Oh, okay. Should be staggered elections. The limit should be two terms, maximum terms of three years. Then they can take a break, but they can come back. If we're having elections like all the neighboring communities, let's have two or three parties as a choice, just like the other communities, except some of us have some native Indian blood. These are just comments. These are just some of the comments right. that we received just on the sure. surveys. <laughs> just to, some interesting ones so yeah. far, yeah. Things are very different. Too many feelings, worried about hurting, but the big picture is we need to save what we have left. I don't ever want to see someone with less native status running my town, being in charge of very important decisions that will impact my future, my children's future. Censure should be done by the people, not the chiefs. Now that was a big issue when we were at the kiosks. <clears throat> people asking about the disciplinary measures and is that part of this and will that be changed? And technically it's not part of it. It's on its own, it's a separate document. But if the community mandated that it be part of it. Anything's anything's possible. I guess it's my only answer. Yeah. Well, as we've been saying, it's uh, if someone thinks that a law should be changed, then write a letter. Mm -hmm. Really, it's as simple as that. And that's how Lori Jacobs, for example, wrote the letter saying, "I think we need to uh, look at electoral reform." Went to the uh, Ganawagi Legislative Coordinating Commission, and that's why you're here today. So, yeah. uh, you know, power of the pen. Um, these are just some other, not really about the law itself, but community meetings should return monthly. Got to get that out. Community member says it's important to them. So every, every single comment I've, I made sure it was noted in the report. Directors should be made, asked, directed to attend community meetings. Stay away, stay away from blood quantum. DNA will make big changes. There should be criteria for being, for becoming a chief. Examples education, experience in relation to working with the community, communication skills, skills understanding community, respecting principles. Um, I believe in the old ways. A chief's house should be in order. No evidence of cheating on spouses. Own a home and demonstrate that he or she can manage their household and cover their bills. In this way, if a chief can do all this, they're qualified to be a chief. Well, there was in the old days. Yeah. I don't know if it was written, but uh, there were... That kind of thing used to come up where, uh, I forget how they used to word it, but uh, the smoke should be coming from the chimney mm -hmm. and the family should be... And as a matter of fact, a long time ago, unmarried chiefs were kind of, well, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you wanted somebody who was showed stability by having a family and all yeah. of that, and it kind of uh, moved away from that. But there's still a lot of uh, very conservative people here, and as even as we look at some of the comments that you've, uh, you've put out there by, by some of the people, it... It shows that it's about electoral reform, but people just want to say things anyway. Yeah, there are certain like, things that have nothing to do with the election, but yeah. they, they want to have their say. Their chance the, to get their opinion out there. Yeah, and so, that's why it's important that <clears throat> although some of the, you know, the comments are not directly related to the law itself, we need to make sure that if we're working with the community, that we deliver all the information back. And um, what else do you have in there? And I believe that it is an honor in rule because we've looked for it. And everybody said, should go back to the way it used to be, you know, to be a chief. Um, there should be job descriptions and duties. The term should be staggered with one third of the chiefs voted for each year to main continuity of council. A requirement for education should be established for all positions. Chiefs should be elected for their portfolios. Are all chiefs overpaid? Yes. I only vote for John D. and Martin. I thought that was a, a real interesting comment, so got a good laugh. Uh, why answer? They don't listen anyway. There should be something in the law about chiefs being on sick leave. Ad must be in good health as a criteria. Drinking and driving should be included in criminal background checks. Deal with priorities. Who should be able to vote and who should be able to run? Chiefs should have to sign declaration of office before they run. Verify information. Informative documents, easy to read. Given the events recently by two council chiefs, I think that the age limit should be 40 and up. People under that age are too immature. Also, criteria should be they are non-drinkers. Most meet membership criteria. 25% blood quantum. We need more laws to keep the council in the right. Transparency issues. Need comprehensive transparency laws. Consultation duties must be comprehensive.
a lot of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. So again, not all of it exactly relating to, to elections, but um, in some ways, you know, regards to what council chief should be. Some of them are in a roundabout way. It's about the uh, who gets elected. Like, like 40 and up, and somebody said they have to be 50. Like mm -hmm. you, you go to the, the uh, issue of... Uh, the Council of Elders on the membership law, for example, when the concept of elders was there. Yeah. And, uh, but you, it's, hard, it's also hard to define elders because you get into a whole debate about somebody who's 20 years old might be a heck of a lot uh, more mature than somebody who's my age. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, you know. just because I'm whatever age I am doesn't mean I'm mm -hmm. mature yet. So there's a lot in there. There's a lot of comments. So, so what happens next then? So... Uh, what I'll do is hopefully before the Christmas vacation, I'll tighten up this document, submit it to the uh, Legislative Coordinating Commission, and I'll wait for them to let me know when the first hearing will be. And then the hearings is when it really gets interesting mm -hmm. because then the, the first meeting, when it happens, will be very, very interesting and very important because that's where you set the stage and the mandate for what will happen in the future. If we go back to what happened with justice, there was a lot of work that went into the information sessions, um, hearings, and what have you that was out there. Uh, it was found, and maybe it was easier for justice in some ways because there was such an overwhelming um, level of support for changes to justice to bring mm -hmm. back the jurisdiction over here. Whereas you look over here, it's kind of all over the place. And uh, that's the nature of the beast in terms of mm -hmm. some people want to be a little more liberal in terms of who runs. Others want to tighten it even mm -hmm. tighter. Um, yeah, should there be criteria? That's something that has come up a lot yeah. over the past few years about um, democracy in its purest form. You just choose who you want. But should they have a certain level of mm -hmm. education? Should they have a certain level of knowledge and all of that so these are the things that will um, come up when i guess the mandate will go because i'll be honest when it goes to the community for the mandate i'm pretty certain that 99 percent will say yep we got to change it so yeah. what what we be, what we work on becomes the job at hand not that uh, they'll say no it's fine i don't think very many people are are satisfied if they look at the law there's there's too many things that are left to interpretation and some of them maybe go back too far and need to be changed so there will be some changes the the trick will be to keep them on track once it goes into the mm -hmm. uh, official hearings what was interesting i think it was kenneth deer we were on the radio on friday <clears throat> don't quote me i'm pretty sure it was him uh and he's not the only one but it's been asked with the justice what is where will this law get heard if people are not satisfied? Because in the past couple of elections, it did go to the court of Ganawage, but people have the right to take it outside. So is there going to be something in this law that says that it has to stay in the community? Well, a good question and a good, uh, that's, that's good discussion that can take place. That if the Justice Act is passed, then that means all Gahnawage laws are heard under the Justice Act and the Court of Gahnawage, or whatever it will be called, becomes where you hear mm -hmm. anything. Right now, because we don't have our own Justice Act, everything has a place, but it might not always be here. And when someone says, I'm, I'm appealing the decision that was made in the Court of Gahnawage, where do they go? They really don't have another place to mm -hmm. appeal, so they have to go to a Court of Appeals, which is not here. So. That's part of the issue. Uh, it's chicken and egg stuff, but it, it's, it's really important. If all goes well, the Justice Act will be um, enacted sometime in 2012. Maybe that's being a little bit uh, ambitious, but uh, it's going back to hearings very shortly. Let's see what happens there. Once that happens, though, it does answer your question. If there's a, a problem with the law, it goes back to the Court of Gahnawage, who will then have a way of dealing with it. But unfortunately, I think it's it's always safe to say that, <clears throat> you know, people have that right. Can we say you can't go outside? The only the only alternative is that the outside will say, "Sorry, go back to Kanawaga. You have your own court system in place." And that's so. I guess part of uh, what'll happen. But uh, when we saw the justice um, information and and discussions and hearings, 
it really did look like the vast majority of people are saying those kind of things belong in Ganawage. Does a court in Longay have any business deciding what's happening to Ganawage elections? I don't think so. That's maybe just me saying that. Mm -hmm. But I think most people say that. Do people have a right to appeal because they didn't like a decision that a court of Ganawage makes? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's part of what justice has to do is to mm -hmm. find a way to make sure that there is redress and a court of appeal so that if you don't like the original decision, you can appeal it. Mm -hmm. It goes to another body within <clears throat> But within Ganawage. Yeah, the community, uh, the community arbitration procedure. Yeah, and there's 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 other ADR. yeah there's other uh, methods mm -hmm. too as well. So, uh, you know, lots lots to happen. There's there is some chicken and egg stuff here. Uh, here so, but I imagine all of this will fit into the Ganawage law legal mm -hmm. system as soon as that is passed. So there's there's a lot of work to do in in 2012. You'll be mm -hmm. part of it. You'll be part of it out there in Ganawage. You'll have to participate in order to make these changes reflect what you want. And that, I guess that's the most important thing to say. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess, uh, is there anything else that we missed in terms of uh, what you're doing here? Uh, mm -hmm. Any more uh, kiosks coming up before the... Uh, no, this is it. We're, we're, this is like the final wrap-up of the, this the first, phase. The, this phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so what's still going to be phase one when we go to the first hearing. It's still... Uh, just the next part of phase one. Um, and at that point, I become a facilitator. Uh, Jeff becomes a facilitator. And the working group uh, people can become facilitators. But at that point, I don't know, I'm not positive if they want to be part of the community members instead of taking, you know, so that they can give their comments and their feedback on what changes they like to see. Mm -hmm. So that option's there. They might be become the experts mm -hmm. who are part of the, yeah, the facilitating sure. team. We'll see what happens there. It'll be interesting. Uh, just a reminder again, who's on the uh, committee so that if anybody is uh, looking for a little more information, um, maybe they missed it. They, they didn't stop at the kiosk. Who do they see beside uh, you? Lori Jacobs, Darlene Alfred, and Angus L. Mentor, and Jeffrey Dybel. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're available. Uh, Trina's in the office, of course, at yeah. the Moha Council of Gahnawaga on a daily basis. You can find her there, but uh, the others are pretty easy to find as well. Yeah. Um, good work so far, and uh, thank you for uh, joining us on this program today. Thank you. Despite the strep throat, you sounded good, mm -hmm. and uh, you had certainly a lot of interesting information. Hope you found it half as interesting as I did. Whenever you get community feedback, you're going to hear what people have to say, and that's what it's about. It's not always so cut and dried. Yeah. A lot of colorful uh, information in there. A reminder once again that uh, the new Ungari Wasu uh, uh, newsletter is out and it is the Journal of Public Record for Legislative Matters. So as things develop in the community, these become kind of official. We put them away and it has any decisions that are made. Of course, right now we are yet to finalize any decision. So no new laws have been made, but all of the updates on what's in the hopper they're all in here, uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, updates on everything. Uh, nice picture as well. Uh, there's, there's, there's Trina and Jeffrey in there. Nice, nice picture. And uh, it talks about uh, what you have there. Also some descriptions on the community decision-making process itself. So uh, thank you so much. And also, if the mm -hmm. recommendations are right in there. So yeah. if you didn't pick up a copy, they're right in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. All right, so there, there's there's lots to see. You have it uh, for as long as uh, you want. You can go through it. They are available, as I said, in the post office box and as well at various places around Ganawaga. That'll do it for us. Thank you so much, uh, Trina. Trina C. Daibo is a, a technician at the Office of the Council of Chiefs, Moha Council of Ganawaga. I'm Joe Delarone saying thanks for watching. See you next time. Ona. Watching Mohawk TV on local channel 4, Gahnawage's first community station. Ganyak Gahaga Tadiadras, the Gayerngahyadu, the Wadaroru.